Antonio E. Gosmoniz, father of modern psychosurgery, won the Nobel Prize in 1949 for the lobotomy. How? Let's get this out of the way first. Phineas Gage did not directly contribute to the development of the lobotomy. The case of Phineas Gage is fascinating in itself, but we won't have the time. The idea of boring into a patient's head in order to cure them of their ailments isn't modern. Trepanning goes back at least 7,000 years to the Neolithic Age, used to treat various ailments from head injuries to treating pain to removing evil spirits from the body. Many would heal from the surgery, though not perfectly intact. We still perform trepanning in the form of craniotomy, but doctors replace the skull removed as soon as possible. In the early 1880s, German physiologist Friedrich Goltz performed brain ablations, surgical removal of brain tissue, on dogs, and observed behavioral changes. This influenced Swiss physician Gottlieb Burkhardt to remove parts of the cerebral cortex from six patients in a mental asylum with the intent of putting them into a state of calm. One died several days after, and another committed suicide, though it's unconfirmed whether this was related to Burkhardt. Jump to 1935, where American neuroscientists Carlisle F. Jacobson and John Fulton performed ablations of chimpanzees after they failed a memory test. One agitated monkey became docile, while the other experienced the opposite. Enter Antonio Igaz Moniz. He was inspired by Jacobson's and Fulton's chimpanzee experiment and saw the health benefits of performing such a surgery on humans. At the time, he got gout and therefore couldn't use his hands, and so enlisted the help of Portuguese surgeon Pedro Amiera Lima to perform a new procedure Moniz developed. He would drill two holes on the sides of a patient's head and inject pure ethyl alcohol into the prefrontal cortex, severing the connections from the rest of the brain. This is the prefrontal lobotomy. By 1937, Moniz and Lima performed on nearly 40 patients with mixed results. However, the lobotomy grew in popularity due to how few treatments there were to treat chronic mental illness. Also enter Walter Jackson Freeman II. It was Freeman who would nominate his mentor, Moniz, for the 1949 Nobel Prize. To sum up Freeman's experience in a sentence, Freeman was a neurologist, not a neuroscientist, and so enlisted the help of James Watts. Freeman would popularize the modern perception of the lobotomy by modifying the procedure to become the transorbital lobotomy. He would adopt a procedure developed by Italian psychosurgeon Amaro Fiamberti. Fiamberti's procedure involved forcing a tube in the back of a patient's eye and injecting alcohol into the frontal lobe. Freeman instead opted to destroy the neural connections believed to cause mental illness by hand. A pick-like instrument would be forced behind the eye socket in order to insert the pick's point into the brain and separate the connections between a prefrontal cortex and the thalamus. A transorbital lobotomy took only around 15 minutes to perform, and Freeman could perform multiple lobotomies in succession. No one who received a lobotomy was ever the same after. The severing of the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that controls higher level thinking, has adverse effects on the human as a whole. Many showed reduced tension or agitation, but many showed apathy and negative effects for empathy and ability to function by themselves. Lobotomies fell out of favor in the 1950s after medications such as antipsychotics and antidepressants became much more effective in treating mental illness. Lobotomies still relatively exist in the form of psychosurgery, the surgical removal of parts of the brain in order to treat mental conditions, albeit with much greater care and knowledge in regards to the brain. Most people who had lobotomies were women. In France, Sweden, and Belgium alone, they made up 84% out of 1,340 people. By 1942, around 75% of all patients Freeman performed on were women. Rosemary Kennedy, at the age of 23, was sent to get a prefrontal lobotomy, leaving her unable to talk, physically disabled, and institutionalized for the rest of her life. In the United States, around 50,000 people received lobotomies between 1949 and 1952. 10,000 would be trans over lobotomies, the rest prefrontal. Freeman himself performed 3,500 lobotomies. Most people who received lobotomies will die before ever knowing they had a lobotomy. Antonio Igaz Moniz. How did he win the Nobel Prize? I think both Igaz and Freeman believed the lobotomy would be the cure all of mental illness, with a lack of proper research into mental illness at the time who could have known. For the achievement of linking neurological disorders as a source of mental illness, he's in that regard a pioneer. At the cost of ruining tens of thousands of lives, and the world of science forever tarnished, he was a monster. Thank you.